This is what they look like here today. Good morning. So today I'm gonna to take you in the hive and we are at midwinter uh, towards the end of January. Well, it's that time of year on the homestead when everything is dark, cold, and muddy. But we still have to check on all of our livestock. Bees are no exception. And while they are low maintenance over the winter, it doesn't mean that they're no maintenance. There are things we wanna check on just to get an idea of their overall health but we really have to be careful so that we don't accidentally cause them harm. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a quick midwinter hive check and show you what you need to be looking for inside the hive without causing a devastating disaster to your bees. When it comes to bees in the Pacific Northwest, something like this little shed works out wonderfully for keeping some of the moisture out of the hive. We definitely have a lot of condensation that can develop, but we've put some quilting boxes in this hive in particular to make sure we can stay on top of the moisture. When constructing these overhangs, it's nice to have enough room for all the hives you're gonna want, and then an, a little bit extra room to put the materials you're working with on the bench. Also making sure that it's tall enough where you don't hit your head on it. This one works pretty good for my height. You also want to make sure you have room to expand your hives. First off, we can look at the bees without even touching the hive. Are there bees flying around? entering and exiting the entrance of the hive? That's a good sign that they're alive. Well, at the entrance, using your hive tool or something similar, scrape out as many of the dead bees as possible to prevent disease. Winter bees have special properties allowing them to live four to nine months compared to the summer bees. During winter, the bee cluster temperature remains around 93 degrees. If this is disturbed, they risk chilled brood, which is fatal for the overwintering honeybees. So to prevent this, we do not open the hive below 50 degrees. While taking a peek, it is just that. It's a peek. We are not going in looking for the queen, the brood, and breaking apart the frames. We have to hold back our temptation until spring. We are simply looking at what resources they have left to get them through until spring. And the first nectar flow, which around here in the Pacific Northwest is alder and big leaf maples. While we are peeking at the bees, we also want to check our quilting box and moisture board for signs of mold. If that is present, great! The quilting box and moisture board are doing their job. We will just need to either get our moisture board dried out, which we have wood heat so that doesn't take too long, or have a spare moisture board to put on so the other one can dry out and exchange as necessary. The rare warmer temperatures we are currently experiencing will cause the bees to start rearing brood 
and flying around earlier than normal, which in turn will cause them to eat through their honey, pollen, and dry feed stores rather quickly, with no source of food for them to gather in the Pacific Northwest. Starvation can happen so quickly with the honeybee. In a matter of days, the whole hive can die, which is why we as the beekeeper intervene responsibly to assess and take care of their needs. So these bees have definitely enough food. Over in that corner, we saw pollen patties. They've got plenty of sugar. They look absolutely great. We'll probably just give them a little OA treatment. Another way we can help our winter bees is to treat for mites. Ugh, the varroa mites are such horrible tiny creatures. On our homestead, we try to treat as naturally as possible. When considering treatment, you need to know the ins and outs of the treatment you have chosen. We treat with an oxalic acid vapor gun. The one we use here is the Laura B powered by a Milwaukee battery. And let me tell you how much nicer this machine is compared to the vapor wand. 30 seconds for a treatment compared to 10 minutes per hive. And when I'm working 30 plus hives, that makes a huge difference. Plus, I do not have to carry a large car battery along with all my other bee equipment. One of the nice things about the oxalic acid is that it can be used despite the weather. In fact, it's a good idea to treat while the brood is low, like right now in the winter time. This is a certified organic method to keep the varroa mites at bay, and the honeybee is very unlikely to develop a resistance to oxalic acid because of the small molecules that make up the oxalic acid, unlike some common strips that are widely used today. Knowing that our bees are nice and cozy with plenty of resources, there is still more we can do to prepare them for the upcoming spring. This is the time to order any equipment that is needed. I'll put some links below to the companies that I work with frequently. If you have boxes, doesn't need to be built, painted, or if you're working with older boxes, does it need to be repaired? This is the perfect time to get this done before your bees arrive in the spring or before your bees get active once again. When it comes to paint, you want a non-toxic outdoor paint. Do not use kills or any antifungal type paints, but rather a paint with low VOCs. I personally like Echo Stain, which is a little on the pricey side, or better yet, boiled linseed oil. We hope that this has been helpful to you and given you the confidence to care for your bees this winter. God bless.